Welcome back. Let's draw some trees. I'm one of the developers working on Dwerf. It's a tower defense dungeon crawler RPG. And you can wish us did on Steam now. We'll be doing a Kickstarter early next year sometime. So when getting ready to draw trees, rocks, or almost anything, the grass color is very important. It's kind of going to decide the palette of everything on top of it. In general, I don't like to make it super saturated because the objects on top of the grass are going to be saturated. I also don't like to make it completely blue or green. I like teal, just right in between. I'm going to draw a couple of trees, but I'll start with this one because it's very simple. I drew this tree for Game Boy and I'm going to color it and explain how and why I'm coloring it that way. So I just put in a solid color there. Now if you remember, I don't like to have outlines on the bottom of objects. So I'm going to actually remove, um, remove the outline on the bottom here. All right, that's good enough. Maybe a couple of highlights would be nice. Um, highlights on the edge generally look better. And then maybe one like right there goes a little bit thinner since this does look like a pine tree. There we go. I think that's a little bit better. All right, so you got the green of the grass and you got a tree that's green. So how do you decide what greens to use in the tree, right? Well, generally, to make sure that it doesn't look the same, you wanna, you'll want to hue shift it. So I'm not gonna color the tree the exact same color as the grass, but check this out. If you just hue shift it a little bit towards yellow or a little bit towards blue, now it stands out. Um, I'm gonna go a little bit towards yellow and make it a little bit brighter. Because in general, I want the objects that are on top of the grass to be brighter than the grass. So here we go, I colored it in and um, it pops now. It stands out on the grass because it is a brighter color. But <clears throat> let's add some lighting to this. Break this up into, into pieces. You can see how there's a little bit of detail, but not everywhere, so it's not too messy. You don't want your art to be messy. There's a there's a mistake that a lot of pixel artists do, and that is um, just adding is over detailing, is adding way too much detail, and it decreases the re the readability of your art, makes it harder to tell what the person is looking at, and it gets messy. And if everything is messy, it takes longer for a person's brain to make out what they're looking at, and you're also drawing attention to things that aren't important. So let's make sure that we don't make our trees too messy. We have this green, which um, you can <laughs> you can tell it's barely different than the grass color. But from this green, what I wanna do is I wanna go lighter because of course the top part of the tree is gonna get more light. So here I went lighter, but instead of just going lighter, I need to go even lighter to, to, for you to be able to tell. You can check over here to see whether it's um, it's a, it's enough of a change for your eye to notice. So I'm going even lighter, but I'm also going to hue shift. And if I want things to go to be brighter, I'm going to hue shift towards yellow. So I'm going to go left a little bit, and this uppermost part is going to be more yellow. However, you can see that it actually kind of looks darker when I went more yellow. So what we need to do is increase the vibrance but not just the vibrance because that makes it extremely saturated, but also increase, decrease the saturation. So as we make things brighter, we're probably going to want to decrease the saturation to make it look natural. If the colors are natural, you want to decrease saturation when you brighten things. And check this out. You can see there's a nice transition now here in the tree. So this, this bottom part, this is, going to go, this is going to be darker. So for darker, we're going to go towards blue. We're hue shifting now towards blue and you can see there's a nice transition here but this looks a little too bright doesn't it we hue shifted towards blue but it still looks kind of bright um, so what we need to do is is um, decrease the vibrance maybe decrease it even more and now we have a nice transition here in colors you this will take time and you'll need to mess around with it so it looks nice and smooth i have an example of a few here that i did for a transition and I'm going to go through these colors really quick so you can see what I was talking about. This one up here, look at the saturation. It's really low and it's towards yellow. As we go towards the middle, we're moving um, closer to the blues and we're increasing the saturation. Look at the saturation here. It's really low. Vibrance is really high. Vibrance gets decreased. Saturation gets decreased, but it's also hue shifted. 
it's hue shifting towards uh, towards green. And then as you can imagine, this one's sort of a medium, and now we're hue shifting towards blue, and we're decreasing vibrance. You can see the vibrance is going lower and lower. All right, so now let's make this blend. I don't like to have um, outlines in the middle. Some people like that in their art, but personally, I don't. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. The reason I did that for this Game Boy tree is just because of the fact that there's not enough colors to do what I'm doing. But now, how do we make the tree, um, how do we blend them, right? Okay, so I split this up into sections and I drew the line straight across because what I wanna show you is how to blend these two and then I'll show you how to give it form. Here we go. So to blend between these, remember, I'm not gonna be drawing these big leaves because this is a really tiny tree, it's a 16, by 16, well actually it's a 16 by 32, but it's a really tiny tree, so, and it's also a pine tree, so I'm not gonna be drawing big leaves on this one. I'll do a tree like that next. Just stick with me. What you wanna do is you want to put um, a couple of these green dots a little bit in, uh, into the, whatever, other section. <laughs> green dots are all green. <laughs> and I said dots, not pixels, oh my God. Anyway, so this right here already looks kind of like a transition, but it doesn't look super natural. So some of these need to be a little bit longer. So make some of them longer um, into this direction and make some of them longer into this direction. And as you can see over here, this already looks more natural, except for the fact that it goes completely um, completely straight across. So let's go back to the, that straight line. What you need to do to give it form, since you're looking at it from above, is that this needs to have a curve to it. That's it, it just needs to have a curve to it, you know, something something like, like this. It doesn't need to be a perfect curve um, either because we're gonna kind of mess it up a little bit. All right, there we go. I added a curve to all of these sections and now it makes the tree look a lot rounder. So now let's go ahead and do that same technique where some of these some of these pixels will go up and some of these pixels will go down. I'm looking over here into the um, into the preview window to see how it affects the shape of it. Really think about where these need to go. This part's actually kind of hard yeah. because you need to kind of do a little bit of trial and error to see, like for example, if I did this, that doesn't look good that messed up sort of the round shape of it. So you need to be careful that it still has, it still has somewhat of a round shape. Okay, and now if you wanna have a little bit more fun with this, I think this is, this is fine, this is pretty good. Um, these are kind of drastic changes in color. I'm doing this on purpose so that it's easier for you to visually, um, visually see. But if you wanna have a little bit more fun, I think also you take a few of, a few, a few of these pixels and put them into the other section and this just makes it look a little bit what did I zoom that? I didn't even zoom that. But that makes it look a little bit more natural. Okay, to make it seem like it pops even more, what we want to do is we want to put <clears throat> a highlight on the edge. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the color that's above and I'm putting it as a highlight on the section below. That made it look that made it look rounder. There we go. Now, it makes sense to have it on the edges in this section, but at the top, it can't just be around the edge because this isn't a flat object. So you you do kind of need to um, actually paint in a section that it, that'll be highlighted at the tippy top. Is that too bright for the top? Ah, eh, whatever. You get the point. You can mess with the colors. It's a little, it's a little too yellow, but um, but I like it. Also, this section down here, we should totally add an, another darker color, and this time it's not gonna have a highlight on the edge. This is a little complicated, but it's not gonna have a highlight on the edge. Instead, it's going to have a darker color on the edge. Remember the technique I told you? Grab the black, go to go to about halfway, and then maybe not that far and then put that on top and this will give you a transition color. 
So the reason I'm not putting the highlight on the edge, but I'm actually putting a darker color on the edge near the bottom here is because this section of the tree um, wouldn't have um, wouldn't have lighting. It wouldn't have light. So we're actually darkening it instead of lightening, lighting, lightening it near the edge on this one. So that's like a more messy version of it. Some people like to have um, a black outline around their entire object. But what I like to do is near the top, take the darkest color that you that you use on the inside and use that to color the top. And what that does is it makes the object look more three dimensional. I talk a lot more about this. I talk a lot more about this in my um, furniture shading tutorial. And you should check that out to understand why I'm uh, doing this to the outline. But what this does is it makes that top part look like it's getting a lot more light. And what I do is I go about halfway with this sort of transition. And then at the very top, I'll go even lighter. And as you can see, now it looks like it has a lot more form. It really looks like the top of that tree is getting that lighting. Um, okay, so I know this isn't perfect. I don't want to mess with this for too long, though. I think you guys get the idea. You could spend a lot more time drawing this kind of tree. Let's go on to drawing a bigger tree where you can see the individual leaves. Okay, so let me show you one of the fastest ways to, to draw a decent looking round tree. So. Let's say we draw um, a, a round tree here. And you, let's say you want to shade this, right? So when you're shading something like this, do not shade in a V-shape. And then also do not shade in a nice smooth shape. This is fine for side view, but not for that top-down look. If you want that top-down look, what you actually want is to do a U-shape. Something a lot more like this. So this next circle is going to go right there. And then I'm going to go brighter. <laughs> I should have just chose these colors. Let me just do that. You can do these on separate layers so you can move them around. I'm just winging it. But I'm popping these on top of each other. And when these, when these stack on top of each other, these layers, you don't want them you don't want them to stack like that. You actually want the center point to be about here. Have these colors run up the edges. Go go around the edge, you know? That's what gives it that top down look is where you can see where you can almost see around the corner. You want these these colors to go near the edge so you can almost see you know the side of the tree. The more that you can see this cut, the more that you can see a color like this, the more you can see it around the edge, the more top down that it looks. In A Sprite, there's this mirror tool, and whew, that's a nice tool. So I'm gonna use that for the tree just to save me some time. You can see how this color it doesn't end on the side; it actually go wraps around. And the lower you get, the less it's gonna wrap around. And the top one, obviously, you can it wraps around completely. You can see the full circle. And now we just need to blend these layers um, between each other. And for this, we need to draw some leaves, something like that. But for 32 by 32, those leaves are almost too big. Um, we don't really want to go bigger than this. You will probably end up drawing leaves doing that little zigzaggy thing. Also, the closer you get to the side, the thinner your leaves are going to become. And then over here in the front, these are going to be these are going to be wider. I'm over exaggerating here, but I think you get my point. Look at my hand, and you'll see what I mean. You see how wide this is? My hand is. As I turn it, which is the side of the tree, it gets thinner and thinner. So make sure that your leaves get thinner as you are going towards the side of the tree. The ones in the front are thick. The ones on the sides are going to be like one pixel thickness. You can see that this gives it a nice perspective. All right, so I'm just going to go and um, draw a bunch of leaves here. 
And basically what I'm doing is I'm using the lighter color and with the lighter color, I'm drawing leaves on the darker color. So then I'm going to use this color to now draw leaves in this section. But to make it blend a little bit better, I'm going to put the leaves um, in between the leaves that I have um, in the previous section. Basically, I'm drawing the same leaf next to it, but the, the, the different color. And these don't have to, you know, be perfect. It'll look natural if they're not. But if you want a really clean look, then yeah, make all your leaves very nice, um, very nice shapes. Did you see what I did there? A simple way to draw the leaves. Oh gosh. A simple way to draw the leaves is to kind of just draw uh, draw a bunch of little U's, but remember you have to give it perspective so the U shape is going to go like this. And remember this one's wider than the side ones. I don't want to spend too much time on this. You guys get the technique here. So it's not super symmetrical. We're just going to add a little bit of variability, um, a little bit of variability in these. And <clears throat> something that I like to do is uh, take the brighter color and in a couple of areas, just highlight, oops, just highlight the the lower color. So you see, I'm just adding a few highlights using the color that is right above it. Yeah, maybe something like that. And then up here, you know, you can have an even brighter color. Let's go really, really bright. You can go as messy with this as you, as you want. The longer I work on this, the messier it's going to get. Um, depends on the look you're going for with your game. If you're trying to make it look hyper detailed, then yeah, sure, add leaves everywhere. If you want it to be kind of clean, probably just go for this V shape look. So here, I'll, I'll show you what the what the V shape technique will look like. Remember, this one I, I did the rings, but if you got a good eye and and you know what the curve should look like you can just go and then literally do a little thing like that i think this is the quickest way but it's a little more difficult than drawing the rings because see that it's a little more difficult than drawing the rings because you have to know what the curve is supposed to, should look like. Now I'm just going in and um, making them look a little bit more like a little bit more like leaves. This is kind of a clean look, and this is me making it kind of messy, which it, it does look more detailed. But you can you can go in and add details like little highlights in this version as well. So this is the general technique, but I'm going to just speed through this next part where I'm going to take it to the next level. <clears throat> just follow along and you'll see how just spending more time with something like this, even though this does look like what we're going for, just spending more time and tweaking things and constantly trying to get them a little bit better will go a long way.
So what I'm doing now is I'm going in and adding contrast to a couple of uh, a couple of sections here, just to make certain certain parts pop more. I mean, I could <laughs> I could keep doing this for a while, right? You, you kind of have to decide how far you want to take it. If you're drawing a bunch of trees for your game, you don't might not want to spend so much time on 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 every tree. This this top part's a little too smooth. We should probably do something like that, you know, make it look more make it look more natural. So with the stump, I like to add um, shading right under, right underneath the leaves. That wasn't dark enough, but there we go. That makes it look like the tree has some volume, right? Because it's casting a, a shadow all the way down to the to the trunk. And then I do give the trunk um, an outline, but I don't. I don't give it an outline from underneath just like the previous tree. I don't like to do that. The only other thing that you really need to do with the trunk is um, think about each of these each of these um, roots and to give it to give it some perspective and form, what I do is I um, I almost give it an outline by putting giving it darker edges. And you can go, you know, you can use black for shading. There are areas that are going to be so dark that they'd be black. So I'm just shading that that corner right there. And then, of course, might as well, if we're doing shading, might as well also add a highlight. So I do like to I do like to add highlights to the to the roots. This one will probably have a highlight in the center. And I do like to shade in between. You want to you want to darken it in between the roots. Do not take this light color and go that high up because remember this right here is darker because of the of the shadows So don't take these lines all the way to the top. It's better to just keep them sort of near the near the bottom I know that for wood a lot of people like to do sort of um, this sort of this sort of technique and that does look like wood and that is excellent and you should do this on your trunk if your pixel density is large enough but but for the size of this tree I don't think I can put a pattern in here without the pattern looking too much like shading the thing is I can I can sort of imply it so I can use the shading to sort of imply that there is um, that texture in the wood so some of these lines I'll just pull up a little bit higher you know I'll, I'll take this and I'll pull this one a little bit down kind of like we did with the pine tree and pull this one a little bit up and by doing that it does it does sort of imply that there is some kind of texture on that stump of course you want to add a big fat shadow Remember for shadows, I just like to I just like to go fully black. With V, you can move stuff in a sprite, and then what I do is I'll take that shadow layer. Oops, that's wrong layer. That's what you need to name them. I'll take that shadow layer, and then I'll just make that alpha. I'll just lower the alpha. I like the alpha somewhere around 25, 30 percent. The closer the object is to the ground, the greater the shadow will be. So um, if the object is really tall, you don't want the shadow to be very dark. Anyway, somewhere around 30 is usually good uh, for a shadow. And there you have it. There is 
your tree. There's a lot of techniques for doing trees and you can skip a lot of the techniques that I was showing you if you want to simplify it. But in general, this will work for you. I'm not super satisfied with this color right here. I think it's a little too yellow. But I think you get the general idea and this will suit your <laughs> this technique will suit your needs. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to export those trees and you can use them in your game. I'm going to have a link in the description to my itch where I have um, Pixel Pete's art assets. You can use all these assets in your games. They're free. In the top right corner, it'll say that you can follow me and you should because it'll notify you whenever I update these assets. I just realized I made it to exactly 100 followers. Shout out to my followers. Christmas is coming up and if you didn't know, I started my own clothing line and I sell some pretty snazzy stuff like this Triforce shirt. By the way, if you're a cheapskate, there is literally a free section on Panic Pop where the shirts are 000. zero, zero. Like, this is not a joke. If you like pixel art, follow me on Twitter. I'll see you next week. Dev Life. Subscribe. Please. Please subscribe.